A second woman accuses Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore of sexual misconduct, throwing the Senate race into more turmoil. Two women say Moore sexually assaulted them when they were in their teens in the 70s. Senators have called on Moore to quit the race, yet he calls the allegations a, quote, witch hunt and remains adamant that he won't drop out. Joining me now is Vince Colonnais, editorial director at The Daily Caller, host of Mornings on the Mall on WMAL Radio. Welcome back to the program. Thank you very much. This is uh, rocking the political world here when this afternoon this woman spoke out. She is the first woman to come out on television and the first to allege that Moore forced himself and left bruises on her when she was 16. She came and gave a press conference right here, and I can give you a a quote here, instead of answering my questions, he began groping me. I tried to open my car door. He locked it. He began squeezing my neck. And it goes on to say, uh, I was twisting and begging. I had tears running down my face. Does this dramatically change the political situation for Roy Moore? Well, it's already had some effect here in Washington. Senator Cory Gardner, who has the NRSC, has come out and uh, and already condemned this and said that they're pulling support for Moore. He's the latest Republican now to unconditionally say that Moore should drop out of the race. Uh, also, uh, as a part of her evidence, and it's unusual here that we have something this concrete, but she claims she has a yearbook that was signed by Moore, and he signed it Roy Moore, comma, DA, which would have been district attorney at the time. He was about 30 years old at the time that this allegation took place. Right, and uh, it also said to a sweeter, it says, she said, to a sweeter, more beautiful Girl. Now, this woman now uh, is married um, and talked about this happening beginning when she was 15 and a student uh, and worked at Hickory House, where he would come every night. Is it appropriate, do you believe, uh, for anyone to invoke the Bible to politically justify this? And let me read you a quote from, this was from Jim Ziegler, the Alabama State Auditor, who said to the Washington Examiner last week, take the Bible. Zechariah and Elizabeth, for instance. Zechariah was extremely old to marry Elizabeth, and they became the parents of John the Baptist. Also, take Joseph and Mary. Mary was a teenager, and Joseph was an adult carpenter. They became parents of Jesus. There's nothing immoral or illegal here, maybe just a little bit unusual. Politically justifying... Roy Moore, is that appropriate? When you have to start going down the road of using the Bible to explain away a, a situation that involves a relationship with such disparate ages, especially when it involves a child, a teenager, um, then that's the wrong path. I mean, remember, Roy Moore here is not doing that. Roy Moore is flatly denying these things, but his, if his allies are coming out trying to justify it using biblical allusions, I don't think that does him any favors. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has come out and said, I believe the women. Does this provide political cover for Republicans to bail on more? Not all Republicans, especially because Mitch McConnell's sort of a divisive figure. As much as he is the leader of the Senate, you're going to find that people who are considered the more establishment Republicans are going to find that they have some cover now that the majority leader has said this. Um, many of the people, though, that kind of see themselves as more in line with President Trump, uh, you may see, are going to hold their, withhold their judgment almost to a T. Republicans have at least said conditionally, if true, then Roy Moore should sit, uh, get out of this race. Including Kellyanne Conway yesterday and uh, including President Trump. That's right. Thank you so much. Vince Colonnais, editorial director at The Daily Caller. Thank you.